okay, a little bit about myself. I've never been a huge fan of roguelike games. You know those games where you start at the beginning of the game and you progress through a level and you, if you live, you get to the next level, but if you die, you have to go all the way back to the beginning. Those sort of games just never really appealed to me until a few years ago when a game came out called Slay the Spire. As a tabletop gamer, I love deck building games. And here was a video game that incorporated the deck building mechanic into the game. So in Slay the Spire, you have a deck of cards and as you play through the game and you battle creatures, you get to add new cards to your deck, make the cards stronger, etc. And in typical roguelike fashion, if you die, you have to go all the way back to the beginning, but some of those upgrades you gained on your run will carry over to the next run, thus making it a little bit easier to progress towards the end of the game. So after avoiding roguelike games for all those years, I thought, oh, okay, this is fun. And then Hades came out, which is not a deck builder game, but due to the, the story and the graphics and the music, I was just really pulled into that game. And in fact, that game won a lot of awards for like best game of the year. Last year, a, another roguelike game that uses deck building built into it was released and it's called Rogue Book. This is from developers Abraham and the designer of Magic the Gathering, Richard Garfield. So I thought, all right, all right. I enjoyed these other two roguelike games. I like Slay the Spire because of the card mechanics, so I'll give this one a shot. Came out on the PC, played it, enjoyed it, but I always thought, man, this type of game would be really fun on a portable device. Well, now it's available on the Nintendo Switch. Rogue Book is all about taking two heroes, combining their decks, then exploring the world of Faria. Exploration is one of the ways this game differentiates itself from Slay the Spire. As you explore a randomly generated map, you'll use brushes and ink to reveal hex tiles. These hexes may contain battle encounters, gold, shrines to draft new cards to your deck, health potions, and buildings that will expose more areas of the map. During battles, you're gonna draw cards from your deck, then spend energy to put those cards into play. At the end of your turn, you discard all your cards and draw a new hand. And when you win a battle, you gain rewards such as gold, which lets you buy new cards and equipment, more ink to open up the map, and gems. I love games with good crafting systems and Rogue Book is no different because those gems that I earned during my run, I can now use to apply to cards and make them better. Some gems will give you a defense benefit, some will give you an attack benefit, but as you play, the fun is trying to decide which cards you want to apply those gems to. Also during a run, as you add more cards to your deck, when you reach certain thresholds, you can unlock abilities for an individual character or the team that you're using. So maybe you want to make one character a little bit stronger, or maybe you want to give a benefit to the entire team regardless of which one you're using. Now during battles, if any of your fighters loses all their health, then wound cards will be added to your deck, which will clog up your hand because when you draw them into your hand, they do nothing for you but just take up space. But res cards are also added, and if you play five of them, you can res your character and then continue. However, if at any time both characters lose all their health, the run ends and you have to go all the way back to the beginning, but keeping some of the benefits that you earn during that run. Once a run is over, you can spend pages that you've collected to permanently upgrade your characters or various aspects of future runs in order to try and help progress a little bit further each time that you play. Also, as you play the game, you're going to unlock additional characters that you can use in future runs. When the run begins, you're going to pick one character to be your leader and then another character to go along with you on that run. And to me, that is the biggest difference between this and Slay the Spire because you can try and synergize characters together in order to increase your chance at a successful run. Also, this is really cool. Position and combat matters because one will be at the front of the attack and one will be behind. So there is a certain character when they're at the front at the end of a battle, they get additional defense stat added to them. There is one character better attacking from the rear. There's one that will gain additional power if they're attacking from the front when they start the turn. 
So that adds a lot to the strategy during a battle because you got to try to decide, wait a minute, when this turn is over, which one do I want to be in the front? Which one will give me a benefit? And also you have to look at the enemies that you're attacking. If you're going up against enemies that are just regular melee, they're only going to do damage to the character that's in front, not the one in the rear. So if there's one character that's running a little bit low on health, maybe you want to put them in the back and let the other character tank for you that attack. For me, that positioning mechanism adds a really cool aspect to this game over games like Slay the Spire. So far, I've really been enjoying this game, but there have been a few technical difficulties as I got this game on release day. First thing, I've noticed there's some lag during battles. If I want to look through my hand of cards, there might be a lag going from one card to the other. Also, when I press A to play a card, it may hesitate for a second or two before it actually gets played. But I think the worst thing that's actually happened is during some runs, I've had the game just flat out crash. Every time this happened during a battle, right in the middle of the battle, this screen would pop up and there was no way to clear it except to shut down the app and restart it. Now, thankfully, the game does auto save during a run, but it does not save during a battle. So when I got back to that run, it put me right back before that battle had started, so I had to redo that battle again, which really stunk because there were some times when I was almost ready to win, and then it would crash, have to shut down, restart it, and then redo that battle again. I think the worst thing that actually happened though was during one battle, the A button just wouldn't work anymore. I uh, used the A button to actually play a card, and I, I couldn't do anything. I could look at the menu, I could, I could exit and come back, but it was stuck right in that position where I, I couldn't do anything about that battle. So I actually had to end the run and then start all over again. While this has been frustrating, I do trust the developers will be on top of this and hopefully will release a patch soon that will take care of these random crashes. Again, I did get the game right before it released. So maybe even as of now, there's a patch coming out. And in fact, in the description of this video, if a patch comes out that seems to address those crashes, I'll make sure to update the description and let you know what version you should be checking for. In conclusion, if you're a fan of the game like Slay the Spire, which uses cards for the combat mechanic, then you'll for sure want to check out Roadbook because it does add the teams. And it adds the fog of war on the map that's where you use ink and brushes in order to expose the map to see if you can open up areas to where you can get some more gold or get some better cards, etc. before you take on that final boss. And if you've never played either one of these, I would probably say start with Slay the Spire just because there's a lot more history in that game. And if you enjoy that style of game, then for sure, check out Roadbook. What are your thoughts on roguelike games? I'm very new to this genre, so what are some good ones aside from Hades and Slay the Spire that I should check out? Let me know in the comments below. So as always, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with friends. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so. And now I'm gonna go try to make another run at this game.